This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Last time we talked about what a system is, but our definition still felt a little vague. It might make more sense to talk instead about what a system does. We'll also be narrowing our focus a bit to talk about systems that exist within the game world itself, or within the fiction of the game, rather than things like player controls, UI, or graphics rendering. Systems typically perform two functions in games. They perform simulations and foster emergence. We'll start with simulations, which are sometimes called abstraction. Abstraction is really the idea of taking a feature of the real world and translating it so that it makes sense in a game. As an example, we can look at gravity. In the real world, gravity is a force drawing two objects together. In a game, typically speaking, gravity is moving a character down in world space. The down motion is an abstraction of gravity. The system that is moving the character or object down in world space is simulating gravity. Simulations can become more complex as we layer more systems into the simulation. SimCity or City Skylines use this almost literally. Traffic, pollution, poverty, crime, utility systems, each of these has their own independent effects on the world, and then they're layered together to simulate the progress of a city. Because of the complexity of the simulation, the interaction of all these layers, it becomes more difficult to predict the precise output of the overarching system. Which brings us to the second function of systems, fostering emergence. Emergence is the phenomenon of unpredictable results when multiple mechanics or systems are combined. For example, say you have a magic system and an element system in your game, and you apply a certain set of rules that electricity spells will set wood on fire. However, as an emergent effect of this, lightning storms in your weather system may now also be able to set trees or wooden structures on fire as well. It wasn't something you were expecting, but because of the way that these systems interact and the elements interact, now this is happening as well. It's something that you didn't previously prescribe in your rules, but happened regardless. And this unpredictability compounds upon itself, leading to wide-ranging effects from even a handful of interacting systems. Emergence can be tricky because it's not limited to in-game effects. It can lead to things like new player strategies, sometimes called metagaming. We'll talk about mitigating these sort of negative emergent effects in a future video. What's important though is that emergence can be a really good thing, because it can lead to events or effects that not even the designer could predict, which is a huge boost to replayability or to more personalized experiences without having to hand produce new content. Game systems perform simulations and foster emergence in your game designs. The simulation provides an anchor point that we can strategize around, and the emergence provides a reasonable amount of uncertainty to keep things interesting. But terms like strategy and uncertainty may just seem like elements of game design. What makes a game design specifically a systemic game design? We'll talk about that in our next video. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.